the budget soft application, it will load up the Excel backbone that it uses to perform calculations in the back end. And we can see that, okay, I'm just installing it now. It lets me know that the icon has been installed on my machine, assuming this is the very first time that I'm running it. Um, and then we can set up, you know, how much money does my household or the entity bring in per month. That's how it keeps track of your spending um, and what you should have in the bank after all bills are paid and things of that nature. So let's say that my household brings in, um, let's say $10,000 a month, right? So $10,000 a month and how does that money come in? Let's say that they come in through two different paychecks. I get one paycheck of $6,000 and another paycheck of Four thousand dollars. I'm just making something up, just for easy demonstration. Uh, I can then insert my email address. Let's just do that, and this is where we'll get automatic notifications of any bills that are upcoming or past due, or anything that we want to just keep track of. Because we can also store this application in Dropbox in OneDrive to make it a little bit more collaborative, um, so that you can have multiple users feeding information and receiving notifications at the same time, all via the Windows Surface. So now I'm going to save this information and add a bill to budget solve so it's let me know that okay I already input that information and now I have to start adding my bills to this system so I have an open bill slot at number one which we expect because we're just getting started so now let's just create our first bill let's just do something simple let's say mortgage and let's say that my mortgage is nineteen hundred dollars a month and it's normally due on the fifth of each month and let's say I currently owe $200,000 left on that mortgage and it will keep track of that and deduct every single time I make a payment of $1,900. It'll slowly chip away at that $200,000 number. And let's say I pay my mortgage uh, through Bank of America. right? So let's say bankofamerica.com. We can store that URL for e-payment and I can put in my user ID and my password. That's optional. Um, and let's store tags for this bill so they can keep track of where our money is going each month. Let's say that this is housing. And then I can pin this to Outlook. This is actually an amazing feature built into the, uh, the way the tool works, especially great on the Microsoft Surface Pro. So I can tag this bill and pin it to Outlook so that basically I'll have an automatic recurring task in Microsoft Outlook that says on the fifth of each month, remember to pay the mortgage of $1,900. So let me pin that to Outlook and it taps in through automation and now we know we have a new task within Microsoft Outlook that we'll be notified on and then we can save and then continue. Right? So now we have to set up a bank account. We see that that bill has been added. We have mortgage, it's currently not paid yet for January, the amount due is $1,900 on the 5th of the month and there's our balance and that's the tag. But now where's that money going to come from? We have to set up a bank account that we can keep track of. It's basically an expense account that money will be deducted from. But we want it to mirror the real life situation. That's the whole point. So we can. I'm going to tap OK with my finger since I'm using a surface. I can actually do that. And I'll type in, let's say, um, uh, TD Bank. Right, And let's say that I currently have $4,000 in that checking account, so I can save it. So now I have an account through which I can actually start paying these bills, but you would want to set this up to be more accurate in real life. Let's just set up another bank. Let's see right here. And let's make this one, let's say Acme Bank, just making something up. And let's say I currently have $500 in that account. So now I have $4,500 uh, basically to work with to start paying my bills. In this example, I only have one bill set up, but in reality, you would set up all of your expenses. You take the time to do it that one time so that you can have full access and full control over uh, what goes on every month. So now that that's set up, we can see a few things. We have $4,500 currently in available funds. Our monthly income is normally $10,000 a month. Uh, we can see from the widgets at the bottom that our available money is $4,500 and our outstanding bills are $1,900 because we currently have one bill that's not paid. With the expense breakdown widget, we can see where our money goes each month. Right now, we only have one bill set up and it's housing. It's our mortgage. So we can see that graph starting to display. If I had other bills set up, they would all start chipping away and shrink and expand accordingly to their percentage of what the expense is per the monthly income. And also, we have a widget here for debt to income ratio. If my income is normally $10,000 a month and my bills are, as of now, $1,900 a month, that's 19% of, of a debt to income ratio. And you can configure all of these different things in the back end on how you want these widgets to display themselves and what kind of uh, gates or goals 
you want to set for yourself. So let's just add another bill on the fly, just so we can have more than one to look at. I'm just going to add another one, and let's just call this one car payment. And let's say that my car payment is normally uh, $700 a month. It's kind of hefty. And let's say that that's due on the 10th of the month, and let's say I currently owe 19000 on that. And I normally pay that bill through, you know, say, you know, uh, cars.com. I'm just making something up. And my user ID, I don't want to put it in right now so I can leave it blank. And let's say I'll tag that as auto and we'll save. So now I have two bills set up within the budget soft application on the Microsoft Surface. Uh, we can see that it sort of changed my debt to income ratio a little bit. It's now 26% um, because I bring in $10,000, but my bills total um, now $2,600. Pretty much 26%. So it makes the, the calculation very easy. We can see the breakdown starting to actually grow. We have one for auto and one for housing. Um, and they're sort of the same right now, but if we had additional expenses added. Now, another great thing about this feature is that it actually can work with Dropbox um, so that you can set up a cloud storage path that you want to feed data to so you can have access to it from all of your devices. So I'm going to set that up right now. I'm just going to go to Set Up Cloud and I'm going to tap that with my finger. It's that you know would like to have access to and connect with some of my cloud folders. I'll say yes, allow, and now I'm going to browse to a folder that I currently have tracked in Dropbox. Uh, let me just choose that right here, the root folder of Dropbox, and say okay. So now I'm connected to the cloud. I have this application now feeding data to a folder that I know is automatically synced to the cloud via Dropbox. That's a, a very convenient workaround to have this application basically push data to mobile devices because it's going to be saving information to a folder that's tracked by cloud storage. So if I wanted to pay a bill now, I can just select mortgage or car payment, but I'll select mortgage and then say make payment. I'm actually tapping right here with my finger. I'm doing that right now. So now it says, okay, the amount due is 1900. It automatically loads in the URL that I said I would make my e-payment from, which is very convenient. I have access to my username and password if I ever wanted to just reference it and put that information in on the embedded uh, dialog. So now let's say I'm making my payment of $1,900 and I'm gonna confirm the payment. And now I can choose where's that money coming from since I have two accounts currently set up. Let's say that that $1,900 is coming out of TD Bank. So I'll select TD Bank and enter. And let's say, you know, this is a test, but you can log any notes about the payment and I'll just say record my notes. And let's say I'm making this payment on the second, which is today, and I'll confirm. So now we very easily have a payment made that we can keep track of just for our own personal use or if you're a business and you really wanna keep track of these things, you could do that. So now I have one unpaid bill instead of two. And we can see here that I paid the mortgage on January 2nd, a full payment of $1,900, which is great. Um, so now at any time, I can view all of my recent transactions by just clicking on recent transactions and it will show me any transactions that occurred. I have some dummy transactions that I was playing with earlier. Um, I could also at any given time, once all of my bills are paid, click on start a new month and it will refresh everything to the next available month. So right now we're in January. If I click start a new month, I'm clicking that now, everything is reset and I'm now fresh to go for February. And this is a great way to keep track of your bills to from month to month, make sure that everything is taken care of, everything is beautifully displayed, everything is easily uh, intuitive. Um, and it makes the whole process of tracking your bills and expenses, which everyone has to do, uh, it makes it very easy and, um, and, and labor intensive, less labor intensive, especially when you're using it on a tappable um, tablet or laptop such as the Microsoft Surface Pro.